You're listening to REI USA Podcast, your prime resource for genuine real estate growth. If you want to jumpstart your real estate career, whether in active or passive investing, this is the right show for you. Join professional home renovator Stacey Rossetti as she talks to REI USA teachers and expert investors willing to share their tips and tricks to get started in investing, sharing actionable advice in every area of real estate, all while putting legality, habitability, and safety above everything else. Combine their unparalleled advice with your strong drive for success, and that incredible real estate fortune will be yours. Now, here's your host, Stacy. So Mike teaches land for REI USA. I appreciate you hopping on. Yep. And um, all right. And he, when, when do you usually teach? I teach uh, the second Mondays every month at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Be sure to jump on it. We talk about everything involving land and some unique things out of pocket, out of, out of the box ideas on investing in land. So it's we always have fun with it. What's going to happen to the land market? I, usually when the market takes a turn, it's usually the first part that takes a little bit. I don't see a huge downgrade in it. Um, I, I know in, in, in talking and selling properties, we, we don't have a lot of fear in that, at least talking to different buyers all over the country. Everybody still seems pretty confident. So I, I'm, I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> I feel like land is so expensive right now it is expensive that's for sure it's very expensive but uh it's finding those pockets and those deals is what yeah. it's all about okay good well hopefully so hop on if you're interested in land definitely hop on and hang out with him he's a wealth of information and you can go ahead and just start your presentation all right all right um it's it's great to be here i'm glad i'm part of it i, I want to do something a little you maybe maybe or maybe not unique is that um rather than just teach you about how to raise capital I just literally got out of a, a capital raising thing for, for one of my companies as well. So I, I really want to take you through that, those steps and how I did that. I actually, uh, it was probably, well, it is the largest capital raising thing that we've done. We've done short-term capital raising, but this was long-term or longer-term capital raising uh, that, that we did. So it was kind of a unique uh, situation, kind of show you a little bit about it. Um, basically a case study on how I raised $200,000. Uh, before I get into that, uh, the first thing I had to think about is where are some of the places that you are, who, who do you talk to about, you know, finding capital? And, and you know, the, the key thing that I wanted was I wanted silent investors. I did not want uh, an inv investors that's telling me how to run my project. It's not that I don't value their opinion, so to speak, but the investors I'm looking for may not be necessarily educated in the real estate world as, as much as they are in, in whatever field they're in. So a couple places that, that come to mind is obviously family members. And, and you can look at family members in two different ways because family members can be what we call a warm list, not like just a cold list of possible people. Because with family members, you may know if they've got some capital, capital that they may want to lend. So there's two ways there that you can approach family members. You can practice on strangers and save your warm market for when you're well-versed with your pitch. And what that means is go to some strangers, your, your cold leads, and tell them what you want to do and, and, and those things. And we're going to get into what you need to talk to them about, what you should show them, those things to make yourself look um, credible. Um, so that's one way. Get it, you know, get it down, fine-tuned before you talk to family members. Another option some folks look at, well, I would rather talk to my family and friends because they're going to be more forgiving and more, but at the same time, more trusting of me. And I agree with that. That's, that's very true. I'd, I'd rather get everything down. My family's probably going to be more um, honest with me as well. So that's something to think about. Uh, doctors and attorneys and CPAs, those are really good people to, to talk about because all of them like to, they, they, most of them have some money, look for investments. Everybody wants to say they're in real estate, but most doctors, attorneys, and CPAs don't necessarily have time to be hands-on in real estate. Well, if they can invest with you and you're invested in real estate, they can go to their clubs or to their dinners and say, you know, yeah, I have a, a practice, but I, I'm also, you know, 
have some real estate and they'll go with that. So again, doctors, attorneys, CPAs, uh, go to some high-end restaurants and bars and just, uh, you know, maybe sit at the bar, have a drink, engage in conversation with people. That's the greatest thing you can do is, is just talk with people and, and, and just get a conversation started, find out what they do, find out if they do have an interest in, uh, in, um, in investing in real estate. A couple of other things, high-end golf clubs, country clubs, uh, that's always a, a pretty decent place. I know um, you go to some of the golf clubs, not all high-end golf clubs are completely private. A lot of them do let uh, guests play as well. Go in there, you know, afterwards, hang out a little bit, just talk to people. Don't be scared to approach people. That's the big thing. Uh, the worst thing they can do is tell you no. Um, so don't don't worry about that. High-end meetups, what do I mean by that? Maybe high net worth people that are having meetups somewhere. Talk with those folks. Um, just introduce yourself. Tell them what you're about. Um, bankers is another one. Some people don't think about bankers, and, and, and that's a big one. Um, bankers may not be able to help you directly, but, um, but they may know people will. Uh, one thing that you can think about is, is that if you've got a good relationship with bankers, and, and what I encourage you to do is talk, go in and introduce yourself to multiple bankers and say, hey, look, this is what I'm looking at, and this is what I look to do. Does your bank have any programs that can help a, either a beginning investor or an investor that's been in it for a while, whatever, wherever you are in your, in your real estate walk? So they get to know a little bit about you and they may say, you know, we don't really have a program here, but I, I know some investors that are looking for different deals. Let me, let me put you in contact with them. So that's, that's definitely uh, don't discount that uh, self-directed IRA 401k administrators, self-directed IRAs. If you're not familiar with them, what they do basically is you can take your money, you control your IRA money and you choose what you want to invest it in. It's a really cool thing. As you grow your business, I, I encourage you to, to create your own self-directed IRA. But contact some of those administrators. And you can Google that, Google them. There's, there's multiple ones out there. Um, senior communities and retirees. Uh, and I'm not talking about assisted living here. I'm talking about uh, like the Dell Webb style uh, communities, things like that, where they're, they're planned communities, a lot of times uh, it's 55 and older. They have to be a uh, buy into it and, and that sort of thing. So, so that uh, definitely helps. Um, so I would definitely, uh, definitely seek out some of those neighborhoods as well. Um, so think about that. So how did I raise $200,000? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I first started, it was uh, when I was thinking about it. Um, it was, it was very scary. Um, so the one thing that you want to do, here's a key thing that you want to do is start conversations before you find the property, before I found the property that I wanted. And in this case, to give you a little backdrop about this, yes, my primary business is land. And of course I, I, I teach about land and, and other real estate stuff as well. But where I am in my business is that we're diversifying my companies this actually was an opportunity for my, my son went into the business. He's 20 years old. He's been after me to get into, into the real estate business with me. So we determined, we determined that we wanted a short-term rental uh, arm of our business. So we owned the short-term rental company 50-50. Um, and so they brought him into the, into the game uh, of, of the real estate world. So we talked with people before. And what, how we did that is we, we both brainstormed, hey, let's write down a list of people that, that we know have access to capital, capital or know people that do have access, and let's target them first. That's our warm list. Very next thing, start with that warm list. Talk to those people. Tell them what you want to do. Hey, look, I'm looking to invest in this. I'm looking for either short-term, long-term. What, what type of investment are you looking for? Uh, and, and what you'll find a lot of times, even, even on your warm list, it may not be the right opportunity for that particular person on your list. But many times they may know someone that may work a little better for. Them. So definitely you can reach out to them as well. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to, to kind of extend your warm list, if you will. 
uh, connections made in, 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 I'm a part of Fear Mastermind. It's a real estate mastermind group. That, to be blatantly honest, was my best connection. And that, quite frankly, that's where the money was raised. Um, it was through connections within the mastermind. Uh, there, we have another member of the mastermind literally raised $150,000 at our last meetup just in the room. So that, you know, connections like that, groups, things like that, that's where you can, can make your connection and, and get those um, different different uh, raises of money, so to speak. Um, so what do I share with investors? I can't just come up to you and say, hey, look, I'm looking at invest, doing some real estate investing. I need, you know, uh, my goal is $200,000. Can you write me a check? Um, most are going to say no at that point. So I got to, I, I want to tell them who I am because I may not know these people personally, probably don't. Uh, so I got to let them know who I am, my background, what I plan to do, who's my team, those sort of things. And the first thing I start off with is, is, is um, a real estate resume. You think, well, what, what's a real estate resume? Well, it's, it's basically exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's like a resume you build for any job. It's, it's, it's laid out a little bit different. Here's mine. This this is literally the one I've used. Uh, and the first part of it basically tells this first uh, thing just basically tells who I am. I've been full time real estate since 2011. Bought my first property in 2002. Um, different types of things I've done in real estate. Um, one thing that you you know you may say, well, I'm not done a lot in real estate, and that's okay. And I'll get down to to where where you can add. Uh, a little more credibility, even if you've not done a lot. The one thing you don't want to do is do not embellish this. Be honest on it because people can go back and track this stuff. And a true, and you know, someone invests in a significant amount of money, that's what they're probably going to do to make sure you're, you're who you are. Um, you know, I've been surrounded by great, great people. Uh, the second part is kind of my background. You know, I have a background in law enforcement, I have a BS and an AS degree. Um, but then I quickly go into uh, into my real estate background. I just want to give them that you know a little bit about my background pre real estate, but not a lot, just a sentence or two. Now to see where I really got into it and really got uh, bigger into the group. Became a senior acquisition manager for a for a real estate uh, company. You know, my team purchased over ten million dollars worth of real estate. I personally didn't purchase it. I didn't use a dollar of my money. My team didn't use their money. We used the investors' money. But still, we we purchased and acquired that much real estate. Um, it's also where I started mentoring people. Uh, so I got into that. Then you start getting into more of a chronological order of, of what you've done. Um, 2014, I had a company called Carolina Real Estate uh investors. Um, 2015, or Real Estate Solutions, that's incorrect there. Uh, 2018, sold that part, created MLM Consulting. Shows that I've got a consistency in what I'm doing. Um, I also, while I was, you know, with the with the Raquel on Real Estate Solutions, talked about how much I consulted and how much mobile, you know, we created, or we bought a mobile home park, some of the profit in that, um, what we did as a whole in that company. Things like that, and you get into my new company or or, or the next company I own, which is today my parent company. Um, you know, we focus in land acquisition. Um, continues to be successful today. Log thousands, train off hours, spoken events. Lastly, my company has a fifty percent ownership in a real estate mastermind. So I talk about that. What does that do for me? That shows that I surround myself with other like-minded investors so that I'm not just, you know, out there on my own doing things. Next thing, 2021, uh, me and my son creates uh, J&M Luxury Vacation Rentals. I'm leading into why I'm going to need this money. Um, And and it gets into why I created it, when my son in it, um, when we create a portfolio. uh, We both benefit from it. Our investors cap. Uh, investors' capital is also additionally uh, safety is that their investments are attached to specifically on real estate. So somebody's not just giving me money. Even before I find the property, they may say, well, I can give you fifty or $100,000. That's great. Don't take that money up front. 
wait. And and one other thing while I think about it, if they say that they've got hundred thousand dollars they invest in, do not take a hundred thousand, take eighty, take ninety, don't take the whole hundred thousand. It's just it's a mind thing. Leave them with a little bit. Um in, in my experience, that's always helped. Um so, so that's that's the next thing. Then I get into what I did with rental property. This is where I break down my experience. I had rental property. That's why I started in 2002. Um, then I started flipping houses, took uh, several rental, rental properties. Um, so I talk about that. And where I get into that also is in 2014, 2017, we did 20 pro- finance by loans from private individuals. So it shows that I've had a, you know, I've had working relationships with, with private uh, funding in the past. Talks about the profit, 450000 in profits. Same thing with the mobile home park up here. It was private funding. Um, real estate, uh, you know, commercial real estate, mobile home park. Talk about it here as well. Uh, you know, mobile was financed through private individual funding. Uh, it was sold at twice the value of the purchase price. Our private investor was fully paid his contracted interest on his money and received his initial in- investment back. So he got his money plus interest quicker than he even uh, contracted it out to. So that's something to think about. Um, then you you get into the consulting and teaching. Obviously, I, I have a background that and I do that. So those are some of the things that 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 you do with with this uh, with your real real estate uh, resume, if you will. Um, your next thing you want to, to have is a basically an executive one page summary. We can take a look at one of those. Uh, this is a pretty pretty neat thing because this actually talks about it's 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 a shorter thing and it talks about a lot more of the specifics of, of what you've got going on. I'll share this. So the overview, it gives you an overview. What, what, what are we seeking? We're seeking investors in 6 to 8% rate of return. Did I expect to get 6% rate of return? Absolutely not, but I can at least start there. Um, ideally, we were going three to five years of investing. That would give us enough time to do what we wanted. One thing that we did do is we wanted a minimum investment of $50,000. Now, we we changed that up as we went a little bit, but what we didn't want is multiple $10,000 here, $10,000 there, because if you get multiple investors, then you get into SEC rules and things like that. And I don't know even get really into that, but we didn't want to deal with that. Um, but, you know, we also talk right here. We do have shorter term scenarios with the same rate of return. Our strategy, what, what are we planning on doing? What's our long-term goals? We want to purchase two to five million dollars worth of property that offers stable, but uh, you know, the stable, but there, there's some way that we can add value. Maybe it's a rehab on it, or um, you know, the vacancy's too low, it's improperly marketed, those type of things. Uh, you know, hopefully when the market or you know, when the market correct corrects itself some, maybe something like this, motivated sellers that need out. Um we seek assets located in areas that have strong per and proven short-term rental history. We do that. This right here to me, the team, that's a key, that's a key thing. Um, and why I say that is because at that, at this at the point in time when we were asking for money, I had properties that that my family and I use in the area that we were looking. We didn't rent them out. They were private properties. The thing is. I didn't have the experience. So I had to surround myself with the correct people that did have the experience. So basically, um, you know, managing members, father and son. Um, I have a track record of growing successful business in real estate. Um, experienced short-term real investors, uh, Nathan Amaral, Tim Nichols, and Jack Nichols will be key consultants in the team to make sure our objective is reached and successful. The short-term real investors have experience not only in the U.S., but throughout the world and owning and managing short-term real properties. So I've got key consultants that I can go to that really know the business, not only in the U.S., but worldwide. Uh, their knowledge and advice is invaluable to our company. Also, who else is on my team? I have um, experienced real estate attorneys at Tide Law Firm. Harry Marsh is a, is a friend and, and advisor, as well as a tax advisor. So I have a well-rounded team of people that can can help consult me in the legality areas, the the tax area, 
as well as the actual running uh, of, of the business. Again, um, talks about investors, uh, ask, you know, their investments secured by real estate asset and things like that, and it gives them a number to call. Uh, those, those, are, those are some of the key things. Um, so the last thing is email templates. I don't, I don't really get it. It's basically a couple of templates that you can use, and, and I'll put my information here at the end of the presentation and show how you can get a hold of me if you want copies of this. I don't mind sharing this. These, these templates and things were shared uh, by investors to me, and, and I don't mind sharing them with others. And you just have to create your own out of the out of the basic template of it. But these things are very important to me because, again, it, it provided credibility to who I was. Yeah, I had experience in real estate, but not the type that I was asking money for. I have investors for that that other sort of uh, sort of deal. So, so that was my next thing. So what was the result of my fundraising? What I do? How'd I do it? So I ended up with three investors. I ended up with one investor that uh, finally ended up at 153000 Investor two was 17000 The third investor was uh, 30000 we had the, we initially thought that the investor one was going to put in more money and last minute he didn't. Um, and, and this whole thing came together because of investor two, which is um, a, a fellow member and mastermind that I'm part of, knew the investor one. Again, investor two was my warm list. He wanted to put some skin in the game, but he's got other things going on, but he had uh, access to other capital, capital and I knew that. So he referred me to these folks. These folks don't know me, but they know Investor Two. So with with, with that connection, you know they were willing to lend one hundred fifty three thousand dollars on the deal. Third investor is a friend and fellow investor. Uh, at the last minute, we needed the additional thirty thousand. I we had multiple cash on the street for land deals, so we could we were getting close to to work to a minimal amount that we have to keep in our bank accounts and I don't like to go below that so I reached out to my buddy and said hey look I'm looking for a you know a thirty thousand dollar investor just to plug this hole quickly he got somebody I talked to he said Mike been wanting to do business with you forever uh, this seems like a good opportunity send me your wire information and be there in the morning he didn't want to talk terms didn't want to talk anything now that's not advisable in most situations but we have a good relationship Next thing I got up that morning, there's thirty thousand dollars sitting in, in the bank account. So investors one and two, the structure of the deal is investors one and two will be cashed out within twelve months. Twelve months. Basically, right now we're just paying them an interest only uh, amount of, on the money, and because this was a newer deal for for the investor one, we agreed at a, I believe it's a ten percent interest rate, a little bit higher than I wanted to go, but I also know that investor one has access to a lot more money than than that. Um, so I would rather pay him a little bit more maybe on the first one to develop that good working relationship with him where uh, there's other deals in the future. Um, so one and two will be cashed out like that. Investor two really came in because investor one wanted them to have a little bit of skin in the game too. So he took uh, a little bit in it. Um, investor three, probably are going to do some kind of profit sharing in that uh, because he wants long-term. Uh, he doesn't really want his money back anytime soon. He wants to, to build and do some other things. So, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate his trusting. Again, that's a very unique situation. It's not, uh, not at all very common. Um, the last uh, thing, what does the finished product look like? This is it. Obviously we didn't buy the whole building. We bought one condo in it at rehab. Now it's on the short-term rental market doing very well. So, um, but it took legwork to get to that. And I said it's $200,000. I literally raised every single bit of the purchase price in closing. Cost us $193,000 for the unit. Closing costs were four or $5,000. We had 200,000. We invested another probably 20,000 or 25,000 in um, rehabbing the unit and new furniture and all that mess. Um, so that's where our our skin in the game came in the rehab money. That that was financed through us. But the actual entire purchase was, again, through uh, investor money that we didn't have to take out of our pocket. So that came out good. Um, and that's how I raised the money. Um, it, it was kind of a, a learning thing as I went, 
but I, I've shared this before and, and, you know, I want to share my experience. I, you know, did I do it perfectly? I'm sure that I made mistakes along the way. I've learned, but these situations helped and it obviously worked and the money uh, became available. So um, if you are interested in, uh, in, in wanting a copy of any of that, you certainly can, can email me at this adre- email address. I'll be sure to send you uh, copies of those, uh, the resume and one page sum- executive summary and, and the email templates at that. So I can do that. Um, also, if you're interested in land itself, definitely hit up my website. You can look at that. Um, and the Monday, every second Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we talk about very unique things, not just the the very basics of land, but we dive deep into each part of it and how to do it and, and the most effective ways to do it in, in today's world. So um, any questions? Okay, so you do, uh, you think on Mondays at uh, seven o'clock, right? Seven o'clock. First Monday. Uh, second Monday. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, okay, awesome, cool, thank you, yes. Hey, I was gonna ask you, um, see if we have any other questions, you can put them in the chat. I was going to ask you, so how much did you purchase that condo for? The purchase price was one hundred ninety-three thousand, and of course, the market we're in now—that was we paid six thousand over ask, which is very hard as an investor even to pay ask on a price, let alone pay over. But it was all about the numbers and where they are. Um, and so, one hundred ninety-three was purchase price. Closing cost was you know four thousand dollars or so. Is that a one bedroom or how big, how much, what's the square footage? It's a one, on it's a one bedroom. And now those units in the condition that we bought ours in are now selling for 240, 250. Okay. Not yeah. Well, that's so funny because I literally just got an email this morning from, cause I'm, I always pay attention to Austin cause I'm interested in Austin and mm-hmm. it's like right on the water, but it's on the lake in Lake Travis. And yep. it's, it's a one, it's a one bedroom. It's just 426 square feet is $240,000. Wow. So I don't, how big is yours? Uh, ours is probably 600, 650 square feet. And okay. the rent that thing brings in is insane. I, there's no way. I personally would not pay that nightly to, to stay in my unit. It's, it's crazy, but that's what yeah. the market is. That's good. I just like to compare markets to see like what they're doing. Awesome. Okay. So I definitely hop on and hang out with Mike. He does, Absolutely. he is a uh, once a month here on land. And then of course he's in the Facebook group and everywhere if you need to contact him too, but I appreciate all your time. Thank you for showing us all that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of REI USA. Let these golden pieces of advice clear your path towards thriving real estate success and start making those amazing financial opportunities work for you. If you liked this episode and want to get more of these valuable secrets, be sure to subscribe to the show at www.rei-usa.com. Leave a rating too and share with your friends. Until next time.